Lesson 1-3, Add Integers. The I can statement in this lesson is very simple. All we're looking to do is to add integers together. In other words, we're looking at positive numbers, negative numbers, and zero, and how those affect our addition problems. So let's first take a look at the Explorer question. Rain increases the height of water in a kiddie pool while evaporation decreases the height. The pool water level is currently two inches above the fill line. You can see a ruler here on the left side of your page. And that ruler serves as a guide so that we know how deep is the pool, where's the top of the pool, and what's the fill line. In this case, the number negative four represents the bottom of the pool. The fill line is at zero, and the top of the pool is at a positive four. So take a look at the table. We have the starting height of water, which is at two inches above the fill line. So that's that two right here. The change in inches of water is going to tell us how that water is either increasing or decreasing in height. An increase of height would be a positive number, while a decrease in height would be a negative number. And then our final column here talks about the final height of the water. So we have a couple of values in the table that are missing. Pause the video, see if you can fill in the table, and then come back and let's talk and check your answers. So part A of the question tells you to look for patterns in order to fill in the table with those missing numbers, and then describe any relationships that you see. Well, the starting height of the water is the same for the entire table. What's changing is the height of the water. And in this case, other than the first row, which has a zero, all of the numbers are negative, which means the water height is decreasing. So the final height of the water, or that last column, is going to show us how much that water is decreasing each time. Essentially what's happening in the table is that each time we change the inches of water um, by one, so it's going down an inch, and then it goes down two inches, and then it goes down three inches, and then it goes down four inches. So each time we go down another inch on the table, we also lose an inch on that final height of the water. And you can see that here. We went from two inches to one inch to zero, which is the fill line, to a negative one, which is an inch below the fill line, and finally a negative two, which is two inches below that fill line. So the table is showing us how the water changed from a height of two inches above the fill line until eventually it is now two inches below the fill line. Take a look at question B. Will the sum of two and negative six be a positive or a negative number? Explain. So pause the video while you think about this and if you know how to solve it then go ahead and do that on your paper. If you don't, then write down a question or something else that you might need to know in order to help you answer this question. Using the same ruler that you see in the problem, we can model this situation. The sum of two and negative six would essentially be what happens when we start at two inches above the fill line and we drop or decrease by six inches. Okay, that would be your negative six. So if you start at two, and then you go down six inches, one, two, three, four, five, six, you end up at negative four. So you do get a negative number. And that actually is the bottom of the pool. So if I'm at the bottom of the pool, that means the pool is empty. I don't have any water in it anymore. Next, let's take a look at example one. The essential question in this lesson says, how do you use what you know about absolute value to add integers? Example one, we are going to look at adding negative integers together. So more than one negative number put together. Nita wants to straighten a photo. She uses an app to adjust the tilt. 
what was the total tilt adjustment? So you can see here in the three pictures that she is adjusting it based on where it currently is and how to remove that tilt in her picture. So right now, the picture is set at zero. That's the original photo. When she adjusts the tilt the first time, she goes to negative four degrees. In other words, she went four degrees to the left. Okay, and the left is going to be that negative direction. But she notices then by looking at the second picture that the picture is still not straight. Okay, there's still a tilt to it. So then she moves on to the third picture, which is where she's adjusted it by another six degrees. Okay, and another negative six degrees means six degrees again to the left. So now the question is, how far is her total adjustment? So if she went four degrees to the left and six degrees to the left, how far has she gone altogether to get her final picture, which looks pretty straight? So we can use a number line to represent the total tilt adjustment. The first thing that we do is we start at zero. So this is step one. The tilt starts at zero degrees. So we go to the first adjustment, which is this right here, and she moves four units to the left to show that negative four. So this first adjustment here is this one right here on the number line that I've outlined in red and then circled when we got to the negative four. But then she makes a second adjustment and she moves, this is step three, she moves six units to the left to show negative six. So she's already at negative four and she's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six in the negative direction. That's with the blue arrow. And the question is, where does she end up? Well, she ends up at a negative 10, which is the sum of negative four and negative six. So we always start at the first integer, in this case, negative four, and then we move according to where the second integer tells us to go. Negative numbers go left and positive numbers go right. So take a look back up at the top of the page where you see the reasoning box. Why is the total tilt adjustment negative? Well, she makes two adjustments both in the negative direction. So that means she continues to move that to the left, the picture to the left, to represent that amount of tilt. So now I'd like for you to look at the second piece of this, which is how to do this without the number line. We can use absolute value and add the two integers together or the, add their absolute values because they're going in the same direction. So we're looking for the total amount that they're moving in the negative direction since both integers are negative. Well, remember absolute value shows us a distance and distance is always positive. And the distance that absolute value tells us about is the distance to zero on that number line. Okay. And distance is always a positive value. So in this case, negative four and negative six, both are four and six units respectively from zero. So adding those two integers together, four and six to get 10, 10 represents the amount of tilt. But now we need to decide why is that answer negative? Well, we moved to the left twice, so that sum is negative because we kept going in the negative direction. So negative four plus negative six is a negative 10.
Now complete the Try It on your own, and then come back and check your answer. So pause the video while you do that. All right, how did you do on that Try It? Do you still need help? If you do, come see me. The last thing on this page is the Convince Me. Would the sum of two positive integers be positive or negative? Explain. Well, remember, two positive integers move to the right. And since they move to the right, the answer will be positive because the positive numbers are to the right of zero. You can think of this in another way. You've been adding positive numbers since first grade, and every time you've added numbers, you've gotten a positive answer. It wasn't until we introduced negative numbers that you got a negative answer like you did in example one.